the Portuguese Bend Landslide. Rancho Palos Verdes in California has the distinction of having one of the largest, if not the largest, landslide in the contiguous 48 states. The Portuguese Bend Landslide has been a significant geologic issue since 1956. The instability in the area is due to natural factors including soft, weak rock formations and elevated groundwater levels, which have contributed to land movement. Human activities such as housing developments, irrigation, installation of pools, and the use of septic tanks have further exacerbated the situation since the early 1950s. An attempted extension of Crenshaw Boulevard in 1956 disturbed the area's fragile geology, triggering more pronounced land movement. Coastal erosion caused by wave action has also played a key role in accelerating the slide by washing away material from the toe of the slide, destabilizing the slope further. Despite various attempts to control or mitigate the movement, the landslide remains active today, posing challenges to development and safety in the region. The slide has displaced around 260 acres of land, causing severe damage to homes, roads, and infrastructure. Buildings were destroyed or severely damaged, and the area has become highly unstable. Between 1973 and 2016, the city has spent some $50 million maintaining Palos Verdes Drive South, a key arterial road that, if lost, would divide the city, negatively impacting the economic and social environment of the city. The eroded sand washed into ocean, over 20 million cubic yards, has not only destroyed the ecology of the area, but also tide pools along the coast from Portuguese Bend to San Pedro. Many attempts to slow or stop the slide over the years have failed. Several years ago, an idea was developed to construct a breakwater across the cove to mitigate tow erosion and the damage that it caused to surrounding beaches. This concept was dropped as too costly and added to the damage of the surrounding habitat. In the end, this concept would have had no impact on the slide and would create a mud flat between the breakwater and the slide. Rock gabions as well as cement pilings were tried and failed, both being pushed into the ocean by the toe of the slide. Historically, the area was home to Lake Ishibashi, which played a significant role in the local agriculture as a source of irrigation water for farmers. The lake was filled in before the slide began in an attempt to eliminate the water source, but the site remains a natural collection point for groundwater. Water from Portuguese, Ishibashi, and Paintbrush Canyons continues to accumulate in this zone, further destabilizing the land. Groundwater from surrounding canyons like Klondike, Mariposa, and Altamira also feeds into the region contributing to the complex hydrological and geological challenges that make managing the landslide so difficult. Over the years, shallow wells have been drilled throughout the Portuguese Bend landslide area in an attempt to manage groundwater and slow the land movement. However, the ongoing destruction of infrastructure by the slide has rendered many of these wells ineffective. Of the 20 wells drilled, only three remain active today, limiting their overall impact on the landslide. This does not include the 19 wells in Abalone Cove and Klondike Canyon. Repeated studies over the years has shown that to mitigate the slide and these negative impacts would require the removal of the ground and surface water that is lubricating the underlying bentonite slip plane. This concept was validated in Abalone Cove, where the movement was slowed to inches when the water table was lowered below the slip plane. Two years ago, heavy rains exacerbated the Portuguese Bend landslide, causing the ground to move from approximately 8 feet per year to as much as 11 inches per week in some areas. This acceleration put around 500 homes at risk, leading to the destruction of some properties. Additionally, the rapid movement has caused constant damage to infrastructure, including requiring weekly repairs of Palos Verdes Drive South and the rerouting of utilities like sewers, water, electricity, and gas. Further test drilling in the area has revealed an additional, deeper slip plane, 300 feet below the surface. 
This discovery complicates efforts to slow or stop the slide, as the deeper slip plane presents a new challenge for engineers and geologists working on solutions. The combination of these factors makes the landslide an ongoing and multifaceted issue for local authorities and residents. Too little too late. On July 26, 2018, a report was presented to the RPV City Council by Daniel B. Stevens & Associates, Inc., outlining a plan to slow or stop the Portuguese Bend landslide. This was intended to be the first step toward hiring someone to implement the proposed plan. Unfortunately, instead of moving forward under the emergency directive, previously used to carry out mitigation efforts without requiring an environmental report, the council opted to first require an environmental report before proceeding. The report has yet to be approved, overtaken by events. Had the plan been initiated in 2018 or early 2019, the impact of the heavy rains in 2022 and 2023 might not have been as severe or damaging. The plan focused on controlling both surface and groundwater. The Portuguese Bend area receives water, both surface and groundwater, from the watersheds of Portuguese Canyon, Ishibashi Canyon, and Paintbrush Canyon. Additionally, water from Klondike Canyon and Mariposa Canyon feed the watershed at the lower southwest end of the watershed. The infiltration of runoff through these canyons serves as a source of groundwater recharge within the landslide zone. To have any chance of slowing or stopping the slide, the water flow from these canyons must be intercepted. A Realistic Plan There is an old saying, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. For 68 years, the Portuguese Bend slide has been studied, and the solution has always been the same. You have to remove the water to slow or stop the slide. The issue, however, is that we've never stopped the water from flowing into the slide area. What was once a manageable, albeit costly, situation has now turned into a disaster. Environmental concerns and habitat preservation should not take priority over effective solutions. Environmentalists are incorrectly treating the Portuguese Bend area as if it's untouched, pristine habitat that must be preserved at all costs. In reality, before the slide, the area was home to 140 houses with paved roads and utilities. Today, it's a large, vacant lot with a mix of native and non-native vegetation that has grown over the last 68 years. For half a century, Rolling Hill's contribution to the problem has been ignored, and this can no longer continue. Here are five steps that need to be taken immediately. 1. Restraining Order Seek a restraining order to stop rolling hills from discharging surface and septic tank water into the watershed. Effluent from septic systems in the upslope areas has long been recognized as a significant source of groundwater recharge in the area, which must be eliminated. In the long term, rolling hills needs to construct a centralized sanitary sewer system and stormwater drainage system for the residential neighborhood at the top of the watershed affecting the portuguese ishibashi and paintbrush canyon areas as well as the city's portuguese bend neighborhood two coffer dams and water diversion in the short term install coffer dams at the head of all canyons from mariposa canyon to altamira canyon Lay flexible pipes along the canyon floors to divert water directly to the ocean. These pipes should remain visible and not be buried. Installing an environmentally friendly liner system in the canyons, where stormwater significantly infiltrates the groundwater, is too costly and time-consuming. 3. Fissure filling and tarps. Fill all fissures in the slide area and cover them with waterproof tarps. 4. Well drilling. In the short term, drill a series of vertical wells at the base of the slide, while continuing to implement horizontal wells for long-term solutions. Several years ago, a test well at Klondike Canyon revealed an artesian well, shooting water up to 20 feet in the air. 
This method could quickly reduce the water table below the slide area. This approach has already been validated as two wells installed between the South Bay Archery Club and the Portuguese Bend Beach Club are now pumping a combined 200 gallons of water per minute. Three additional deep dewatering wells are planned. 5. Reimbursement Finally, seek reimbursement from Rolling Hills for both past and future mitigation efforts. The time to act is now. Another rainy season is upon us.